Hello, today I want to start a series of videos on this particular doily. I've had it on my YouTube channels for a few years and regularly get questions about it and how to make it and a lot of people have asked me to demonstrate the whole thing. Uh, this is a vintage pattern that is freely available online. There is a link in the description box below this video so you can go to the website and print your copy and follow along. Uh, what a lot of people find and what I found myself is some of these old patterns can be a little bit difficult to decipher and so I decided to go through the whole thing and show you how I made it. Um, in particular the first round which is done slightly differently to the way it is described in the book. So let's get started. Um, this is a lovely doily which also makes a nice collar. The nice thing about this doily is that it's made actually all with chains. So you only need one shuttle and ball and you want them to be wound continuously so your shuttle is still attached to the thread coming off your ball. And I have a small piece here to show you so we're going to be starting with one of the large rings. And for this you are starting on a chain. And to do that you want to leave a tiny loop at the beginning so you can join back and close that first ring. And you start with the second half of a double stitch. Pull it through but not all the way through you want to leave a loop like this and hold it between your thumb and finger and then you're going to start with the full stitch a full double stitch but you want to leave a pico about this size not too big because you just want a tiny loop a pico like this before your first full stitch and in this first ring there are four stitches so that's the first stitch two three four and here already we can pull the stitches or snug the stitches so i'm going to hold on to my stitches between my fingers and pull on the core thread and this will take in that big loop but it will leave the small gap left by the pico at the beginning that's a very tiny one i've made but my hook does go through So you can leave your, um, if you want your loop to be a tiny bit bigger, just make your, that pico at, before the first stitch, just make it a, a little bit bigger than what I've made. And then we carry on with 11 picots separated by two stitches. So four stitches, now we're going to make the series of 11 picots, I make them quite short. And two stitches in between. Two. Second pico and two stitches. One, two, third pico, fourth pico, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. That's right. And three more after the last pico. So we made one to complete the pico and we're making two more. And then we join back using that tiny pico space we left at the beginning. A little tug on my core thread before I complete the join. So there we have the first large ring. And now we're going to start on the Victorian sets. So the Victorian sets are made with four first halves of a double stitch followed by four second halves of a double stitch. And I'm calling them sets. So one set is four first halves, four second halves. So we're doing two sets. So one, two, three. Four first halves. One, two, three, four second halves. So that's one set. And you can see how it makes, I'll show you after again, it makes little V's. 
Let's do the second one. One, two, three, four first halves, and one, two, three, four second halves. And here we're going to place our paper clip on the core thread. This is going to leave a gap where we can join two a bit later on. And carry on with two more sets. Two more sets. One, two, three, four first halves. One, two, three, four. And another one. One, two, three, four first halves. One, two, three, four second half. And here, before the next set, we're going to leave a small picot that we're going to join to when we complete the round right at the end. And again, the next set, so three, four first halves. You can see the little picot it leaves here. And four second halves, two, three, four. And another set, two, three, four. And four second halves, three, four. So that's our first long chain of Victorian sets. And now we're going to make the small ring. There's a big, bigger ring on this side and a smaller ring on the other side. And this ring is made as a self-closing mock ring. So I'm using my finger to hold the loop in the thread and bring back the core thread into the pinch like this and make the first half stitch and bring it really close to your previous stitches. One stitch, we're making two stitches and then eight picots separated by one stitch. One picot, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and one more stitch because there's two stitches at the beginning and two stitches at the end, two full stitches. And to complete this self closing mock ring, pass your shuttle through the loop. I hold my stitches between my fingers and pull on the core thread to close the ring. Like this. So one big ring, one small ring, and now we're going to start going down the other side with Victorian sets again. Fold that out of the way. One, two, three, four first halves. One, two, three, four, and another one. One. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four second halves. So that's our two sets. And we're going to leave a small pico before the next set. So that's two first halves, three, four, one, two, three, four, and another set, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. And now we're going to bring, sorry, and now we're going to join at the uh, paper clip. You want to make sure here that both rings are facing the same way. So you're looking at the front of your stitches. This does tend to twist a little bit when you're making the first one. So I'm going to tug a little bit on my paper clip to make a little bit of space. Remove the paper clip and push your shuttle where you had your paper clip, or rather push the hook of your shuttle and make a join. And now continue with Victorian set again. So we're going to make two more sets to get us to the next ring. Two, three, four first halves. Two, three, four second halves. 
one, two, three, four first halves, then one, two, three, four second halves. So this should look like this way. And now to make this ring, we're actually going to carry on with the chain and you'll see it'll just curl onto itself and we're going to join it with um, an alligator join. So the big ring starts with four full stitches, so four double stitches, one, two, three, four, and then we do again 11 picots separated by two stitches, one, two, try to work a little bit more slowly, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eleven and three stitches after the last picot. Two, three. And you'll see how this obviously naturally curves, as is the way of tutting, all made of curves. So I'm going to snug these. And then you want your left hand thread, so your working thread, to go underneath and your core thread the thread from your shuttle to go on top and you want to line this up between the first and second stitches, full stitches that you did of this ring, like this. And then we're just going to carry on with the Victorian sets, making the first half nice and tight against your work so that keeps it in place and that forms your ring. So that's the first half to three, four, second halves, two, three, four, and again, one, two, three, four, and second halves, one, two, three, four. And we're back at the paper clip. So a bit of thread. So place the paper clip on your core thread. Hold it against the work and then carry on with another two sets. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And here we're going to join to the very small pico we left. Here at the top, you might have to turn your work a bit and look for it. There it is. And join. And then complete this chain with two more Victorian sets. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four. And we are now at the self closing mock ring again. So I'm using my finger to make a loop, bring it back in the pinch, do the first stitch, and then you can let go of the loop and carry on two stitches, and then eight picots separated by one stitch. One, pico, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one more stitch. So that's two stitches after the last pico. Let's 
So to close the self mocking, to close the self closing mock ring, pass your shuttle through the loop, hold your stitches, and pull on the core thread. Like this. And now we're ready to go down again with the Victorian sets. So it's the same repeat, so you carry on two Victorian sets and leave a pico, two Victorian sets joined to the paperclip space, two Victorian sets and you're ready to make the, last, the next large ring. So you want to repeat this and repeat again until you have 36 large rings and when you get to the 36th small ring you want to not forget you're going down this side here and you will join at your little starting pico that you left just here before making your last join at the base of your very first large ring. So that's it. I hope you'll enjoy making this first round. If you have any problems, please leave me some comments. I'll try to answer all your questions and I'll see you for the beginning of the next round. See you soon. Bye bye.